confirm or give authenticity to his preached word, then why is it nowadays that the word has already been confirmed that we have people still saying they can speak in tongues? I believe tonight we need to understand that tongues were a part of God's miraculous gifts. When you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse number 10, you will discover that both the working of miracles and speaking in tongues are mentioned as the miraculous gifts of the Spirit. Right. The ability to perform supernatural feats is the same power that God used to allow men to speak in tongues. Tongues and working of miracles were all a part of that system that God was using to reveal his will. Right. And so when God did away with the miraculous power to perform a miracle, then he also did away with the ability to speak in tongues. Right. Since they were used at the same time, they were going to be refused by God at the same time. God decided to use them and therefore God had the power to make the decision to refuse them. And when God got rid of miracles, he didn't leave tongues hanging around. Amen up in hell. That's against the character and the nature of God. God don't work like that. If he was using them both during the same time period, then if one of them's gone, then all of them got to be gone. Y'all right. understand this? Right. Right. I, I need you to get that now because I can't move forward to where I want to be until I get you where you need to be. Right. God used miracles and speaking in tongues and gifts of healings and prophecies and the interpretation of tongues, miraculous knowledge, miraculous wisdom, and miraculous faith while the church was in its infancy stage. But the time was coming when God wanted his church to mature in growth and in knowledge of him. And he wasn't going to have to continue to use these gifts to do so. Right. That's the reason the Apostle Paul informed us in verse Corinthians chapter 13 and beginning at verse number 8 when he said love never fails but whether there be prophecies they shall fail whether there be tongues they shall cease whether there be knowledge yet shall vanish away he says for we know in part and we prophesy in part part here and part there you had to have an apostle around or you had to have a fella who was endowed with a special spiritual gift around just so that you could hear a word from the Lord but God was putting together a much better system of revealing his will God wanted it so that when you needed a word, you would have to call on no apostle. God wanted it so that when you needed to hear his voice, you would have to travel a hundred miles to somebody who had a spiritual gift. Right. That's what Paul indicates when he says we know in part and we prophesy in part. We're doing a little piece here and a little piece over there. Paul would give a little piece to Corinth. He would give a little piece to Ephesus. He would give a little piece to Thessalonica. He would give a little piece to Colossae. He would give a little piece in Rome. Part here and part there. But God was bringing about a time in that which is done in part shall be done away with. And he says that's when the perfect comes. We talked about last night that the perfect has already come. The perfect law of liberty is already here. And so now when I need a word from the Lord, I ain't got to go to no man. I can just pick up the book and get me a word from the Lord. The perfect has come. And now that the perfect has come, that which is in part 
shall we have been done away with. All right. But we still got some folk. All right. All right. Oh yeah, yeah, we still, still we still got, got some folk. John, right. we, we still got some folk in churches all over this country right. who are claiming to be able to speak in tongues. I want to help them tonight. All right. Can I help them tonight? Tonight is help them night. In addition to get right night, it's also help them night. I want to help them understand what's happening to them. Because many of them say, preacher, I was one who spoke in tongues. They say I was in an assembly of the, uh, 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 of the Pentecostals and, and I started to feel something. Uh -huh. uh, something happened inside of me, preacher. And I began to say some things I didn't know what I was saying. Well, I did a little, little taste of research on that kind of activity. And my research turned up a logical conclusion to a biblical problem. See, whenever you say you experience something that the Bible says you can no longer experience, that's a biblical problem. And so when I can't find the answer, uh, to your problem in God's word. I can look for it on the internet. Right. Amen. Because whenever you step outside of God's word and start doing some stuff that God's word say that you can't do, I can log on to the World Wide Web and find out why you're doing this. And so therefore, in my research, I discovered that what's happening to these individuals is not a result of the work of the Holy Spirit, but it's a process that's called excessive ecstatic excitability. This particular process called excessive ecstatic excitability will cause you to mumble and grumble and to babble out sounds with your mouth that make no sense to the human mind. Right. This excessive ecstatic ex excitability is literally an overexertion of one's emotional state, which causes them excessive excitability as their emotions climb to the point of complete emotional ecstasy. Well, and it's in this emotional state that most people believe that they're having an encounter with the Holy Spirit, and therefore they see to speak something to express the excessive emotions that they are experiencing. Uh, this process is called that emotional excessive excitability. Uh, it's really when you get beside yourself in excitability. It is one's means of trying to connect with God spiritually, not knowing that when you look at God's word, the way to connect with God spiritually has never been through no excessive ecstatic excitability but the way to connect with God is to be baptized because the Bible informs us in Romans chapter 6 and beginning at verse number 3 know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ was baptized into his death and since Jesus is God in the flesh when you're being baptized into him that's how you come in contact with him the way to get in contact with God is not through emotionalism but it's through the process of baptism when you look at the Bible when you look at the Bible, the Bible clearly and plainly shows us that the gift of speaking in tongues was never a result of an overexertion of one's ecstatic emotional state. That's right. It was always a way. All right. Tongues were always a way for God to communicate his word with someone who spoke a different language than everybody else. That's all the tongue is. Why we got folk all over the world talking about unless you speak in tongues, you ain't. We, we don't have evidence that you got the Holy Ghost. They are lying. They man up in here. Quit lying to folk and trying to make them think that they don't have the Holy Ghost because they ain't saying what you saying. 
The Bible never says that. Amen. The Bible shows us that the ability to speak in tongues was the ability to communicate a language.